This weekend was definitely one of the most anticipated ones in recent NASCAR history. The Daytona 500, a high-octane feast for the senses, had all NASCAR fans on the edge of their seats as they witnessed an electrifying circuit that broke records left and right. Many fans find it hard to believe it, but this race actually lasted longer than any other Daytona 500 in history, with an incredible 212 laps to keep us all on the edge of our seats. It goes without saying that the most interesting and adrenaline-injecting event from the previous race was the incident between Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. These two racing legends were leading the pack before an unfortunate crash caused a bit of chaos on the track. And from all of that wreckage, Ricky Stenhouse emerged as a prominent victor. However, contrary to what everyone had hoped would happen, Ricky didn't just cruise to victory without a fight. He had to battle against the reigning NASCAR champion, Joey Logano, who was not about to give up without a fight. But then, Almarola decided to wreck his car into Travis Pastrana's. So for that, Ricky Stenhouse owes Almarola a huge, juicy steak. Because hadn't it been for Almarola and the crash he had caused, Stenhouse wouldn't have won the race in the first place. At the particular moment when Almarola crashed his car, Stenhouse was running low on fuel, which meant that he wasn't going to end the race as a winner, had everything finished under regular circumstances. This is what he had to say about the last few seconds. Yeah, when the 8 went to the bottom, there I was, able to push the 22 and the 5. We had a huge run. I was hoping we were going to get the white there. And we didn't. So I knew I was going to take the top. I was hoping the 22 was going to follow. And he did. He was able to push us out. I went to the bottom. The 8 and the 22 got a huge run. The 5 split me in the middle. But another fellow dirt racer with Bell gave me a good shot down and the little short shoot into one. And we were out front when the caution came out. We were out of fuel, so the fuel light was going crazy. So one man's trash is another man's treasure, with Stenhouse participating in the winner's breakfast being absolutely the highlight of the day after. But hadn't it been for Almarola, Stenhouse wouldn't have picked up the checkered flag, and all the emotions he is feeling right now wouldn't have been present. The Daytona 500 was an absolute marathon, clocking in at an epic 212 laps. It was the longest running edition of the Great American Race to date, and the winner, none other than Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who drove his Chevrolet to victory. For JTG Dowry Racing, a one-car team co-owned by former NBA player Brad Dowry, Stenhouse's triumph marked his third career victory, with his other two wins coming in 2017 at Talladega and Daytona's summer race. But wait, there's more. This was actually Stenhouse's second time winning the Daytona 500. And get this, it happened in his very first race, back with his crew chief, Mike Kelly, who previously led him to two Xfinity Series titles. It's almost like they were destined to win together. What's truly remarkable is that JTG Dowry Racing is only the second team to ever win the Daytona 500 with a single car since the Wood Brothers Racing and Trevor Bain did it back in 2011. Stenhouse's impressive feat was no easy task as he battled NASCAR's reigning champion Joey Logano for the lead and even had to contend with low fuel towards the end of the race. But he didn't give up and ultimately emerged as the champion of the Daytona 500. I think this whole offseason, Mike just preached how much we all believed in each other. They left me a note in the car that said they believe in me and go get the job done, Stenhouse said. Man, this is unbelievable. This was the site of my last win back in 2017. We've worked really hard. We had a couple shots last year to get a win and fell short. It was a tough season, but man, we got it done. Daytona 500. It was an emotional roller coaster at the Daytona 500 on Sunday night, with surprises and heartbreaks abound. Kyle Larson was on the verge of clinching the win but his eagerness got the best of him when he jumped the starting line too early, causing him to crash in the final wreck. The pain of losing was softened by the triumph of his friend, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who ended up taking the checkered flag. Happy that Ricky won. I'm super happy. That's all I could think about after I crashed. Waiting to hear that he won, Larson expressed, his helmet likely still ringing with the echoes of cheers for Stenhouse. He's one of my best friends, so I was hoping it was going to stay green, so it would have been me or him win. I can't wait to go give him a big hug because he is one of my great buddies. Joey Logano, the defending cup champion, finished second in his Ford, but that was little consolation. 
The second place is the worst place, man, Logano lamented. I want to congratulate Ricky on his success. For a racer, nothing compares to the glory of taking home the Daytona 500 trophy. This is why coming in second always hurts so much more than first. In the end, it was Chris Bisher of RFK Racing's Ford, Alex Bowman of Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet, and Christopher Bell of Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, who finished one, two, and three. It was a rare occurrence for the pole sitter, as the last time they finished in the top five was in 2001, when Bill Elliott accomplished the feat. The remaining top finishers of the Daytona 500 also made their presence known. A.J. Almendinger of Kalig Racing finished in a solid sixth place, while David Suarez of Trackhouse Racing and Ryan Blaney of Team Penske came in seventh and eighth, respectively. Ross Chastain of Trackhouse and Riley Herbst of Rick Wave Racing held down the fort in the tenth spot. But the race wasn't about the top finishers. Action sports superstar Travis Pastrana made his Daytona 500 debut and finished a respectable 11th, just one spot ahead of Kevin Harvick, who will be leaving NASCAR at the end of the year. Kyle Busch, who finished last in the race, still managed to make an impact for his new team, Richard Childress Racing. In fact, he was leading the race by three laps, with just three laps to go in regulation. Unfortunately, a spin by Daniel Suarez forced the race into overtime, and the rest is history. After the race, Bush radioed his team with a nostalgic nod to the past. Back in 1998, that would be the win, boys. He was referring to the way the late Dale Earnhardt won the Daytona 500, as there was no such thing as overtime back then. Earnhardt simply cruised to victory, a feat that Bush undoubtedly wished he could have replicated. It was a roller coaster of emotions for Kyle Bush in the Daytona 500 after leading by three laps with only three laps to go. He must have been feeling pretty darn good. But then a spin by Daniel Suarez sent the race into overtime, and Bush's hopes were dashed. As he crossed the finish line in 19th place, he couldn't help but lament the fact that the rules had changed since 1998, the year that Dale Earnhardt won the Daytona 500. Bush joked that he comes down to the Daytona every year just to figure out when and where he's going to crash and who's going to come out on top. This time it was Stenhouse who took the checkered flag, leaving Bush to shrug his shoulders and say, there you have it. On a more positive note, seven-time NASCAR champion Jimmy Johnson returned to the series and finished inside of the top 15. After spending two years in the IndyCar series, Johnson is now back as part owner of Legacy Motor Club and is considering entering a few races. It's great to see one of NASCAR's legends back in action, and fans can't wait to see what he'll do next. Brad Keselowski managed to lead the most laps, 42, but only finished 22nd in the 65th Daytona 500. Despite his valiant effort, Keselowski was unable to claim the victory, leaving him disappointed and unwilling to speak to the media about his performance. Interestingly, for the first time in the history of the race, the current champions of the Cup, Xfinity and Truck Series, all participated in the event. Joey Logano, the reigning Cup champion, came in second place, while Ty Gibbs, the Xfinity Series champion, finished less than impressive 25th. Zane Smith, the Truck Series champion, fared slightly better and finished in 13th place. It's worth noting that Smith was among the only 40 drivers in the truck series, and he managed to race his way into the Daytona 500, an impressive feat for any driver. Looking ahead, the Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California will host its last Cup Series race in its current layout this Sunday. After the race, the track will undergo renovations that will make it unusable for racing in 2024. The reigning past champion of the race is none other than Kyle Larson, who will surely be hoping to defend his title in the final Cup Series race at the track's current configuration. With that being said, what do you think about Ricky Stenhouse's win? Was it well played or luck? Let us know in the comments below.